Good morning and welcome. It is the first day of May, Crypto Day 2018. My name is Derek and let's start off by announcing that I'll be opening up a live chat on uh, Wednesday morning or May the 2nd at approximately 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time and I'll probably keep it open for an hour and a half to two and a half hours. So any questions, any comments, things of that nature, a little bit of stuff with live trading, whatever happens to be going on at that time, I'll be uh, there for that. Moving on to uh, the Binance. I have added seven different alternate coins, Nucleus Vision and Cash, Repio, Ripio, Credit Network, Quantstamp, POA Network, Sub something, Arion, Enigma, and of course that of Bitcoin. This is how many of each that I bought. Now within the Binance site, this is what I find very, very frustrating. The rake is relatively low. I like that. However, they when you buy, they are raking you away from these coins. The decimal buy amounts is because, well, say POA, I bought 360, but the rake took 0.36 of them away from me. So be it. However, I would have rather they take the rake away from Bitcoin, especially because you cannot trade decimal amounts of these things. I've never seen that before. And I think within the strategy, there's going to be a lot of people that will eliminating decimal amounts here and there for different coins, or if they just happen to leave the exchange, they're going to be leaving a bunch of balances with point whatever numbers. But with that being stated, that's how it is. Now the balances of each one worked out to be that of, uh, well, let me just even flip it over here. So you can see the overall starting number was a little under 0 0.24. 0 0.24 divided by 8 is 0 0.03. What I want is every single one of these codes to be worth the same. And Bitcoin has to be one of them within the strategy that I'm playing. If all the markets go up together, I'm going to be needing to sell these so that the Bitcoin numbers go up. And if they go down together, I'm going to be buying in. But we can see how this was 292, 297, 297, so on and so forth. Uh, those were the original buys. Now I've already bought and sold. I made about three or four small trades along the way already and this has been a day and a half since how this looks currently. We'll have uh, 6,038 here. Again a few of them I've sold off, a couple I've bought after the change but the value now is two point basically just marginally higher. So 24 or 0.242 divided by 8 means I want each one to be a little over 0.03. This first one is 315 and change. Then we have a little over 300. We have over 298, 295, 302, 296, 308, the Bitcoin at 305. There's really nothing I can do here as a trader. I technically could sell off about 100 and 50,000 Satoshi of this upper coin. But what am I going to do with what I sell? Am I going to buy this one up so minorly? No. But if this if this one stayed were to rally up to say 340, 350 value, then I'm going to sell it. And then maybe this one here falls to 287. I'm going to buy that one up along the way. So that's a strategy in which I am doing this with. Now, as far as on Bittrex, and this is going to be the spreadsheet method to see how you are doing versus hodling. When I talked about the strategy where everything is worth the same, like I'm using different categories for mine where one or some coins will be worth more than others, but I have several dozens of different coins. I have to go to page four on my Bittrex wallets to get to the, um, there's 20 per page, so I got like 66 or 65 different coins that I'm playing. 
And what I did on like day number two, or th I think it was day two, maybe three of me using this strategy, is I got the uh, value of how many coins I owned at the time. Now to get the data in the wallet, simply copying and pasting with the new setup is frustratingly impossible if you have to view page two of the holdings because what will happen is you highlight your everything from like be like how, what coins are how many reserved how many pending orders your btc value all that type of stuff if i copy and paste it it's going to work but then i go to page two and it will not copy any more data after that it just doesn't work if you right click and click select all and then copy it that gets fixed. However, it's going to copy and paste everything else on the page. You'll just have to delete the nonsense. And to get less nonsense, ensure that the market on the left-hand side is in the US dollar index and not on Bitcoin because then they'll tell you what the price of every single market is in Bitcoin. And there's like over a hundred, well over a hundred of them where against the US dollar tether, there's maybe a dozen and change. Or, or 15, 16, or however many there might be. So by doing this early, you got to copy, you know exactly how many of each coin you started with. So therefore, the value of what the HODL version will be is how many of each coin you have multiply current price. That's simple. Very, very simple. And you get the data later on. So assuming you do this today, you wait a couple weeks, a month or two, you get that same data again later on. Hopefully by this time you've had a lot of buys, a lot of sells, so on and so forth. And then what happens later on is you take the value of everything and you take the value of each coin and you take what Bitcoin or what Bittrex says it's worth, divide that by how many you own, that gives you the price. So now that you got all your prices on a spreadsheet, you can multiply current price by how many you started with and then get the sum of both values. I have noticed myself that in about two and a half or three weeks, I have marginally overperformed the market by about one extra percent more of, an, of my, my portfolio than it would have been via hodling. So nothing great, but there has yet to be any uh, great volatility to set up monstrous gains as of yet either. This is an example of my last several trades. I haven't made a trade since uh, 5.46 p.m. Eastern time or 1700 point and three quarters of hours. There was an obvious time where I was gone at 12 o'clock, leave for lunch for a few hours, back to trading. But all this is, is situations like with Siren, the last spot here, it was worth too little. It was the value of the SRN was worth less than what the code was supposed to be worth Bitcoin number. So I bought it up so that it was worth what it was supposed to be. Codes like AMP, Crown Coin, DGB, they were worth too much. So I sold them down. So this is basically how, uh, how a daily thing is, is just buy and sell every single day. So based on the last trades, I had a buy of Siren at 62.80. Well, that meant I sold near the top, and I did. Amp, I made a small sell on because the price was up here. I got a sale in at 33.83, pretty much where it's at now, but that's because I was buying this back in the 18 average. I like the setup. I think this thing getting above this level of resistance as shown here on the three hour time frame can extend further above 36 and so on and so forth, but it's still correcting within the 18 average in a very sideways market right now. CRW I sold at 17.344 as that was during, uh, well, near this top area in here. So obviously if I buy down in here at the 16.3 change, that's a small profit. DGB, I sold at 482. This is a single hour chart, which is where the price action is. 
It had this leg higher. If it goes back down to like 460, I'll buy. If this is able to get past this resistance, and somewhere over 500, I'll look to sell some more again. I get what I'm doing is selling or buying what is needed so that its Bitcoin port val portfolio value is at a target number that is set. Next up, LMC, I bought at 718, which is down in here. Price is lower, then I'll put a buy in. It's not up enough for me to sell, but if this thing breaks in and we're looking at like 757, I mean, I'm gonna sell some. It's just how the game is played for me. As far as how this looks on a daily chart, after having a very beautiful run, breaking the 18 average on April 10th, staying above it until that of April 25th, it has corrected now in a sideways volatile 18 average because of the how fat I can use as a word this 18 average is. But uh, you could say it's hanging on by a thread, still hanging on. However, if you see clear breaks below, uh, say, 700, 693, definitely reason for concern that this thing might fall another 50 plus points. Next level of resistance to me is the 18 average of highs in around 800, but getting above that point there, now you're talking about breaking past this previous resistance that it hit on April the 24th and 5th, was a, with, which was a match of the two days on March the 3rd, or, or early March, uh, but then getting above here and testing these areas that could have tremendous moves. Because look at this up move compared to these, this move in here. I mean, the volatility now compared to back before is nothing now. As soon as it picks up, oh boy, basically. Next up, I sold Polly at 62.90. So I'm going to put the shorter term on and then go to my P-O-L-Y code. And we can see it's had a nice little up run. Now short term with the three, you have this move that comes up here, pulls back, and then does that again. So I obviously sold in here. I would have bought it back here and I would have sold it before. Ooh, one o'clock in the morning. I can't remember if I sold it there or not. I probably didn't sell it. No, I was sleeping at one o'clock last night. So I didn't sell up here because I wasn't near the computer. Had I sold there, I would have been a buyback and then a sell again. So I'll buy this if it goes back lower, say somewhere around 6,000. Interesting setup here. This thing might be ready to go up for some good gains. You come up to this April 22nd and then you have your pullbacks, but let's look at all of these big lows in full. The original lows in April, or mid-April, 4,500. And then it settles in with multiple lows in a range of 4,900 down to 4,800. So 48 to 49, like five, six times hit lows in here. And then twice hit lows at 5,050 down to 5,000, but it's higher. And then once hit low at uh, 5,061, marginally higher than this one. Noticeably higher here again at 5,400. Then we have this low in at 5,573. The collection in here, after it rallied from the low to this high, came back and stabilized at a level of the resistance. So. Very much a nice, beautiful setup for Polymath, which is a very new code, but uh, see how that one flies on. Next up will be Dope, which I sold at 684 earlier on. Now it's 679, so pretty much amongst its price, looking at this on a single hour time frame. The only reason I can sell up here is if I bought down below here. So I obviously bought during one of these uh, lower ends at around 650. And it's about a 5% gain. That's good enough for me. That's what's available. I'm going to take the volatility that's given. I'm hoping it gets larger and I go for more larger percentage gains, but I can only take what's given to me. Dash, I bought at the 522 handle. 
because I sold this peak area here. So if it goes back up here again to 538, 540, I'll sell. If it goes down to 513, I'll buy. Sold some THC for 1225. Currently it's in at 1212. So I didn't get this upper high price, so be it. And if price action gets above this level of resistance in here, that looks like it might be, it could make a move up to this 1300 or so area, short term with a single hour time frame here. It's at a correctionary point at this time. If you look at this on the daily term time frame, after this beautiful rally on April the 10th, it topped on the 19th, comes back for a price correction down the 18 of lows. And then it rallies up to previous high and has now been correcting through time within the 18 average at this stage. Volatility is very low, but the trend is still in process of that of setting up a, at early stages of that of a bull market. If this thing doesn't get going, it doesn't eventually break this 1427 mark and make a new high, then this is most certainly that of what I consider a failed breakout because all the energy that would be spent towards reverting the trend, the fact that it took several days to get up to this point, and it showed several days of a good positive uh, correctionary move, that's a good setup. If that doesn't happen and you see weakness within the 18, you can definitely see things like fast moves to previous low or breaking that and making a new low or testing older previous lows from the past. So that is THC. Before that, I sold NXT at uh, 25.93. Just getting the code. It's at uh, 26.14 now. Nice little setup because it is breaking this level of resistance. This could be very big because you have your move up. What, 9, 10, 11 or so correctionary days? It dips through the 18 lows, but it recaptures it really quickly. The session on Tuesday had a break out above the 18 average of highs after it had a move up there before. So I'm looking at this thing ready to make a new leg higher. Of course, volatility is minute compared to what it used to be. So if this thing is going to formate that of manifest that of a bullish pattern, then it's either going to do it on its current low volatility, but it wouldn't surprise me if previous big green candle moves up were to be the name of the game. And it doesn't take that long to get to the 4,090 level, then maybe a day or two or three later, it gets up to 66.52. Wouldn't be a surprise to me. Now after that, I ended up buying Litecoin, but with this being a large percentage of my bankroll, which means one Litecoin is worth that of about 13 of the smallest coins. I have over 60 coins and Litecoin represents more than 10% of the trading portfolio. So the fact that it's just trading in this little sideways action, well, I got my Litecoin in at the 1613 handle down in here. I'm glad to see that it's going up a little bit since I got it. Maybe this thing is going to be ready to go because it has been just staying around this 18 average band on the hourly time frame since April the 27th. There's 24 of these per day. Well, you need to... Now, there was a little scare down in here, but it's recaptured it. It looks as if maybe this thing might be ready to go. I need to see it hold and stay above the 162 and change handle for the rest of the night at least and I think if it does that without going up first that is maybe it's ready to poise to go but uh, if this thing does end up getting going then maybe it can make a move up to 166 or the previous Fibonacci at 169 because when these things can get going you can have some decent size moves up 
And I'm going to finish the video off. I'm not going to show every single one of my last few buys and sells, but just for something to show, uh, that's what I have done. Thank you for tuning in to this video. I'm glad to have helped anyone in which uh, has been the case. Of course, everything's always within your own risk and own reward for your investment choices in which you make it. I like saying it that way because everyone's going to talk about Oh, past results aren't indicative of future results, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you're taking your own risk by doing something, which is true. But you'll never hear them say that, oh, you're taking a big risk that can uh, cost you, yada, yada. But you can make whatever else that number is back. In high volatility times of cryptocurrency, it becomes very profitable, possible, to be able to take relative small amounts and turn it into gigantic amounts. And uh, yeah, so thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.